The Lord be with you. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Indeed, Christ is risen. Jesus is alive, and God has been swallowed up. God has swallowed up death forever. And with Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome, we may feel astonished and we might feel confused, unsure of what to make of this empty tomb. But that's why we gather together and to proclaim, to worship, to praise, and to affirm the liberating reality of Christ's death and resurrection. In word and feast, we celebrate God's unending love and depart to share this good news with all of the world. Hallelujah. Our service this morning is uh, parts of setting one from our worship book, so I encourage you to follow along with that. And we'll begin with our Thanksgiving for baptism from the back of the church, so I invite you to stand and face the font as you are able. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom, freedom's land. And in a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless, boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Our gathering song is from our worship book number 365, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to follow the opening dialogue as printed in our bulletin. As the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. As the first day of the week was dawning, the stone was rolled away. At the dawn, an angel greeted them. He's not here, for he has been raised. At the dawn, an angel greeted them. Come see the place the angel's clothes were white as snow. Do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus. The angel's clothes were white as snow. Jesus has been raised. Go quickly. Tell his disciples Jesus has been raised from the dead. Go quickly. Tell his disciples Jesus is going ahead of you. Our hymn of praise is hymn number 664. Heaven is singing for joy. Holy One, you come to us with power beyond all knowing. You lift all things out of the dust. You breathe love into every cell. You call us into communion with you, and you claim victory over death. Blessed be your name, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the readings. Peter crosses the immense religious and social boundary that separates Jews from Gentiles in order to proclaim the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection so that God's forgiveness in Jesus' name would reach out to all people. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. 
not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our gospel acclamation this morning is hymn number 172, and we'll sing that twice. This morning begins with confusion. The stone has been rolled away and the tomb is empty. Disciples arrive, then angels, and finally Jesus himself. And out of the confusion, hope emerges. And a weeping woman becomes the first to confess her faith to the risen Lord. This is the Holy Gospel according to John. I would invite you to be seated as this is a longer reading. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. And then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. 
Then Simon Peter came following and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. And then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she looked over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And when she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? And supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in, in Hebrew, Rabuna, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and to your father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Can you even imagine, can you even imagine that celebrating Easter might be dangerous for you? I think the the danger comes from our knowing in advance the outcome of the drama. The drama unfolds before us that Jesus rose again. And knowing what's going to happen, knowing what's going to be said and sung this morning, we're in a real danger of being, of not being shocked by this unimaginably joyous, unprecedented event. And if we're not careful, Easter can become just another one of those stories with a, a feel-good, happy ending. If we're not careful, we'll cease to be surprised or in awe. If we're not careful, the hair on the back of our neck will not stand up when we hear this almost unbelievably good news. And this happens because familiarity breeds, if not contempt, then at least kind of a ho-hum, well, of course he rose kind of attitude. If we succumb to this familiar feeling Jesus' death on the cross is hardly a life-changing event. It's hardly a life-changing gift. But rather only a short pause and a celebration lined only with bunnies and baskets, colored eggs, and family dinners. In the depth of our faith, we can't afford to become so complacent It's important that we understand Easter profoundly and that we appreciate its ultimate value. Important that we remember that it follows and gives meaning to the weight of Good Friday and the pain that that black day bears. The sadness and the darkness of Good Friday brings to light several things that should should never be glossed over, lest Easter lose its goosebump producing almost too good to be true character. The woman, women disciples were among the very few who stayed with Jesus right to the end, waiting for him, waiting until he died. They knew that he was dead. There was no illusion about that fact. For them, as well as for his followers, 
Jesus' crucifixion and death seemed like a crushing, disillusioning end without any hope of redemption. At the time, for them, all was lost. All was dark. Despite the promises that they had wanted to cling to, it appeared that Jesus and his cause had been defeated. I mean, after all, he had suffered a humiliating shame and discrediting reality of death by crucifixion. And they thought, well, maybe his opponents were right. Maybe his death showed him just to be a a deluded messianic pretender. And... Despite the apparent reality, the women stayed there. The women stayed throughout this whole tragedy. The women stayed even after his death. Despite their despair, they went to his tomb early that morning, and yet these brokenhearted, still faithful women found that when they arrived, that the body of Jesus was not there. And so they became the first to tell of the experience, that frightening and awesome discovery that sometime during the night he had risen. At first, however, they didn't know what to make of this. They didn't know what to make of this absent body. Terror and amazement seized them and they fled the tomb. These women became the first believers for whom it was Not just enough to know that the tomb was empty. Because for all of those who are discerning, the empty tomb does not prove the meaning of the resurrection. The woman's experience shows us what else is necessary. It was facing Jesus. Facing Jesus' death and continuing to stay true to him afterward that allowed them to discover the resurrection. They found that he was alive to them in a way that could never have been imagined by them, in a way that would never end. They discovered that what the world had put to death, God had raised high. I mean, that's the whole meaning of Easter. God's love triumphs over every barrier. Easter means that no power on earth can destroy the reality that is Christ. The angel gave the women the clue that unlocks for every Christian the power of the resurrection. The angel instructed them to go and tell the other disciples that Christ was raised and had gone before them into Galilee. The angel told them that they should quit looking for Jesus in the dead, but rather find him alive in a new way, in the life of the world. And if they could do that, then they would discover the meaning of the resurrection. They would discover that even despite their lack of commitment to God, God remains committed to us in a loving, unconditional, no strings attached kind of way. Despite And no matter how much or how little we might deserve that love, they will discover that God makes them the most precious beings in creation, people that are worth dying for. Easter is coming face to face with a Jesus who has not just reversed the power of death, but has completely triumphed over it. Today is the day in our faith to proclaim that fabulous news. The good news of the resurrection is that Christ is a light that overcomes all the darkness that that life can throw at us. That light overcomes the darkness that we experienced in Holy Week when we passed through vivid reminders of our human frailty. Reminders about how easy it is for us to be gobbled up by the power of the enemies of God. Now, Today, we can declare that things are different. Now we know that we have the love and the light of Christ going before us and living within us. Now we can we see the way that 
and we can dare to bring that love and light to the darker areas of our world. Today allows us to begin saying as a response to our dismissal, thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Now we can express once again the joy of these empowering words. We can go forth from this service back into our workaday world with a renewed and a transformed way. We can go with confidence and courage because we know that Christ went before the disciples to Galilee. He also goes before us into the world. Christ leads the way for us, always going before us, raising us with him from the depths, from sickness and pain and even death, from disappointment and sin and despair and grief, Christ goes before us as our light in the darkness, allowing us to reflect that light to the rest of the world. Today, we move with the women at the tomb into a renewed life, ready to face everything with joy and filled with God's love, proclaiming and showing that Christ is risen indeed. Today, we shout, Alleluia, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Yes. Amen. Our hymn of the day is from our worship book number 385, Good Christian Friends Rejoice and Sing. the whole church let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles Creed as printed on page 105 in the front of our worship book. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church. Where the church is persecuted, protect it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope. God of grace, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations, free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice, empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. God of grace, hear our prayer. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Today we ask your blessing to be with Paul, Ken, Renan, Hannah, Eddie, Jim, June, Scott, Isabel, Mike, Marlene, Ron, Robert, Donna, Elaine, Norma and family, Richard, Corey, Ryan, Harold, Orma, Alex, Len, Austin, Yvonne and family, Doug, Don, Kelly, Andrew, and all whom we name aloud or in our hearts. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. God of grace, hear our prayer. We turn to you for peace. We ask that you look upon the nations now engaged in war and hasten the day of peace. We remember areas of conflict in the Holy Land, Ukraine, Syria, and Haiti. Look in mercy on those exposed to peril, conflict, sickness, and death, and show compassion to the dying. In your good providence, remove all causes and occasions of war. Incline the hearts of all people to follow the path to peace and concord, that war may cease and the day of reconciliation may come quickly. God of grace, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death. Renew our trust in your promises that we live with joyful courage and compassion. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I encourage you to share a sign of Christ's peace with those who are close to you in whatever way you feel comfortable.
Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Amen. Right. There. As you are able. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and ever-living God. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he is the true Passover lamb, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Loving God, 
We praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for free freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your son to be our redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit upon us and upon this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. When the disciples asked Jesus how to pray, he said, when you pray, say this. Our Father Amen. in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come, come and eat at God's table. These are the gifts of God for all the children of God. Thanks be to God.
I invite you to stand as you're in. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let's pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. So I encourage you to go from here renewed and strong, knowing that the Lord is alive, almighty, and present. Look for the blessings that await you this week. Weep with those who weep. Rejoice with those who celebrate. Tell the story of hope. I invite you to follow the blessing as printed in your bulletin. God of light. Lead us. Power of God. Hold us. Joy of God, heal us. Laughter of God, bless us. Love of God, bless us. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Our sending song is from our worship book number 377. Alleluia, Jesus is risen.